guys, thanks for stopping by. What you are looking at today uh, is my new fandangled antenna mount, which is going to go up on the rear of the Pajero there. It's going to slide down the back of that spare wheel cover, which I'll show you in just a second. Uh, now the reason, uh, what I'm actually doing is having a bit of a fiddle. Uh, I'm tossing up between these two antennas, and depending if I can get this chameleon, which is the one you see here, this is the V2L, uh, it's quite a long antenna. Uh, if I can get this working to a point where I'm happy with it, and I have had it on the vehicles before, but it hasn't spent a lot of time, so I haven't really tested it thoroughly. Uh, a lot of people seem pretty happy with those. Um, if I can get that working successfully uh, and to a point where I'm happy with it, I'm going to put the uh, ICOM 7100 in uh, with a tuner and match it up with that. And we're going to go and go with that. If I'm not happy with the performance, and I am again just going to temporarily install that with the 7100, then I'm going to go back to the ATAS 120, uh, 120A, I think it is, which you see here. Uh, now this was previously installed on the Delica, and I've been very happy with the performance of that. Again, both of these are compromised antennas, so don't be confused about expecting to get big numbers out of these mobile uh, type antennas. Uh, but I need to also be realistic about what the ATAS is capable of uh, and the sort of conditions I can run it through. Uh, ultimately, I probably would like to go with this antenna, but I really want to go from the 857 and have the 7100 in the car. Uh, ultimately, the 7100 is just a better overall radio. It's newer, uh, the filtering is, is better, and it's just a bigger screen. The problem is it's going to be hard to fit the screen in there somewhere. I haven't really uh, pondered that one yet, where that's going to go. So, if this works well, the 7100 is going in. If that doesn't, this goes in and the 857 goes back in because that works. It's got the, you know, obviously inbuilt controller for the ATAS. Uh, it's just a really nice, simple uh, combination to work with. Again, I have to be realistic about what I'm going to put this through. Uh, I'm going to be doing quite a bit of forward driving, off-roading, that sort of stuff, and I would like to leave the HF set up. Uh, but the ATAS is just aren't really made for corrugations and stuff. They're a bit heavier. Uh, it's motorised. There's moving parts in it, and I just don't want to bugger it. I don't want to put it through that sort of uh, torture, I guess. Whereas this is just a whip, uh, no moving parts, uh, and should be pretty straightforward and uh, less opportunity to break it. In relation to the mount. Um, I am, I have gone with a height that's going to work with the ATAS. The experience that I've had with these is that you need to get that whip in clear space. Uh, now I'm not sure if you can see that, but that's still going to be in line with the cage up the top here. Uh, and in the past, when I've had it like that, had it mounted that high, uh, I actually had some tuning issues with it and it didn't want to tune. Uh, in particular on the higher bands, uh, I think it was 10 and 15, it didn't want to know about. Uh, on the, the lower bands, 20 and uh, 40, etc., it had no issues. Uh, as soon as I raised that up and got that whip, you can see there, over the top of the cage, uh, everything improved and uh, tuning was no longer a problem on those higher bands. So, now if you just got yourself a Pajero and you were wondering, like me, how do I get this spare wheel cover off? All you got to do is go in here. Pop these two caps off, undo that one, undo that one, now they're very long uh, and they will eventually pull straight out so just undo those uh, and there they are and it is wise to keep a little bit of grease on them. If they seize you can't get the spare wheel cover off uh, which means you can't change the wheel. Now come to the outside, just give it a little bit of a lift and she'll swing open just like that. The idea here uh, now I did decide I'm going to face this in towards the car, like this. Because so I've got some U-bolts. going to put some U-bolts around that there. So probably about there. And then another one there. That's going to sit up there like that. So that is the drilling done. I didn't bore you with that. Everybody's seen somebody drill. And I guess you're starting to see what I'm talking about. So here's the U-bolts here. I left a little bit of slack in those just so I can move it around. So I have noticed if we have it seated right in there like that 
going to have some issues here with these bolts touching the spare tyre. That is what she's going to look like. You can see the height of that there, pretty much clear in the house. Uh, the whip itself is obviously clear uh, of that rack. Now I am going to move it in towards the centre just a little bit uh, because if I have it too far over this way I was actually rubbing on here. Now this is going to move a little bit uh, so I don't want to be wearing through this plastic or bugger or anything like that up so I've moved it over this way a little bit. Uh, this is still just uh, steel and it's not coated or anything so I left a piece of this out the other day uh, when it rained uh, only ever so slightly it came out and it was covered in rust so I'm going to need to treat this uh, and give it a coat of paint or something like that. I've got some clear inside which will get me away for the time being. I might just uh, dremel all these off so I know how, far, how much room I've got to work with before I start printing it up and uh, there we go. Now the idea here after dremeling that, and I might need to take a little bit more off that one, but uh, in theory, because I've got those nuts on there, if I undo those now, that should, in theory, reset that thread on the end there. Uh, actually, we're not going to have any problems with that at all. Because the idea is, again, to have the nuts on there, uh, cut it off, providing it's not the hardest of steels, and then when you take that nut off, uh, you should reset that thread. And then obviously uh, you're still good to go. There's a bit of a sharp edge on that. I'll finish that off later on. And there we go. So that's back up against the tyre. Got plenty of clearance there. I think you can see the gap down at the bottom one there as well. When you're doing tightening up your bolts, uh, I might be telling you how to suck eggs here, but um, if you just keep tightening one up, eventually this thing will come tight. And you're going to have one of these bolts sticking right out here, and the other one's going to be in there like that. So. If you've got one like this one here, uh, that I've got, this one's a little sitting out a little bit further than this one. What I can actually do is just back this one off a little bit and tighten this one up. And I'll pull that one back in and this one will come out. So they're fairly even. Uh, you know, we don't want one sticking all the way out and that one sitting all the way in because it's going to be getting closer to that tyre. And I'll probably take a little bit more off this top one. Uh, but we're well clear. The main concern was that once I butted that up, if that sat in against the tyre like that, and it was vibrating, it was going to wear a hole quick smart into that. So we definitely need to make sure we had clearance, and at this stage, we do. And purely for testing purposes, because I can't leave well enough alone, uh, I've just ran some coax uh, here, just some short length that I've got. Uh, that's only going to be like, I don't know, 10 feet or something, not even that. Uh, so it's going to be a real short one run once I actually get it set up and done. We'll just kind of lift it in under there. Um, I won't show you the battery, <laughs> I've connected up the uh, 7100 7, because uh, it's a little bit messy but uh, we've got a fuse box and everything but this is fused so no concerns there. Uh, this is the LDG uh, down the bottom here. Now, the one good thing about the 7100, this is the body uh, so the body doesn't actually, uh, the fascia doesn't mount to the body, the head uh, but you can actually either mount the microphone into this uh, or into the head itself and the head itself also has a speaker inbuilt to that, so we don't need to worry about running speakers or, or anything like that. Uh, you can have an external if you want, running off the body, uh, but there is one in the head. So I think you can see that. What I've done for testing is just thrown the uh, Icon body up on top with the tuner. And we're going to hit the tune button here. Okay, your station's there, but it's very quiet. So that brings it up. We're struggling. Mm. It's about a 1.7, so not real happy with that. We'll go up to 20. Sorry about that. Let's just have a tune around so we can hear anything. 
probably not the best time of the afternoon. I'm looking on your QRZ.com page and uh, boy, you've got some beautiful photos there. Isn't uh, Mount Fuji uh, looking stunning uh, with the clouds all around her? Wow, it's very, very beautiful. And uh, what time of the year was that taken? Was that in winter or was that in, uh, in uh, autumn? It looks uh, beautiful, that's for sure. Um, yeah, we're, we're operating from um, a place called Tuhui, uh, which is 50 kilometres north of Auckland. Uh, it's a small rural town, a uh, population of about 450, uh, but we're only half an hour, 35 minutes in the car to the central city of Auckland, uh, so not too far away. Juliet 01, Mike Dudu Victor, uh, ZL1 MRC. Okay, so that's the ZL station, uh, which is directly across the coast from us. Uh, granted, it is over the water. Uh, I don't know what the case is, I'll stick that up on the screen. Um, and there's a, I think it was a JS, so that's uh, a Japanese station. Surprisingly, we actually got a bit of a match on 80. Um, yeah, I do, I do, I'm off first. Hi, Lap. Talk to you soon. Yeah, I right, yeah. think today, 2XW today, 2XW, Make a 2XW, cut, cut. Okay, so we're going to leave that like that for a little while and just uh, do some testing, see what I think of that antenna. Uh, at the moment, it's not really floating my boat. Uh, I think the possibly the ATAS may have performed a little bit better. Uh, we need to find somewhere to mount that, so it's a little bit more permanent, so it's not going to be floating around, but for now that will do. Uh, anyway, we'll run around like that for a, for a week or two, uh, do some missing in the morning when I know the bands are open and stuff like that on 40, uh, and certainly coming home in the afternoon, maybe a little bit of listening at night, uh, a little bit of listening at night when 10 metres opens up. So if you've got any suggestions, or if you've got one of these mounted in your car, uh, I'd really be interested in seeing how you mounted that, especially if it's Pajero and seeing where you put it. So that's it, guys. Thanks for uh, taking the time to watch this one. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one with some more updates. Cheers.